Hello and welcome to another episode of the CHGO Fire Podcast, which is now proudly presented by Coors Light. A big thank you to our new friends here at CHGO, the Molson Coors family, and specifically Coors Light for wanting to be a part of the fire coverage here at CHGO and for being the presenting sponsor of this show. We are super, super excited to have them as a partner for this. We've got all sorts of stuff. We've got a Leagues Cup Neon light over my shoulder. We've got I mean, a bucket. It's beautiful. I should have placed it a little better, but it's beautiful. Hey, it, it, it's it's there. Although maybe right now, you know, the League Cup is the most popular thing in American soccer circles. I did consider putting a U.S. Open Cup sign over it before we got started, but did not get around to that. So a huge thank you to Coors Light. They're going to be our partner throughout the season. They feel strongly that, as a lot of people do, that the Chicago Fire and their fan base is kind of an under marketed to community. And if you care about this team. You're all in because Lord knows it has not been the easiest thing to care about in recent years. So shout out to Coors Light. Shout out to all of you for tuning in. They're going to partner with us on a lot of exciting stuff this year. So stay tuned for that. A second quick thank you. And I feel bad that I have not introduced my co-host here yet. But I have to shout out everybody at the fire for the great Return to Red event they threw at Moonlight Studios in the West Loop. We got a look there for the folks on YouTube Shakiri modeling the kit, the big event space was just a phenomenal, phenomenal night. And a big thank you in particular to Jess Braveman and Rudy Hodgson from the Fire Comms team for uh, how they put that together. Thank you for the gift of the awesome return to red jersey. Looks sweet. Big fan of this thing. Looking forward to hopefully seeing it on Saturday. And a man who was maybe not in person, but was very involved in the return to red <laughs> event and has some experience Wearing this shirt joins sure. me today, Dason Robinson, former fire player and the man who voiced the video you probably saw <laughs> of the return to red kit launch. Dason, yeah. welcome to CHGO Fire. Thanks so much for being here. Appreciate you having me. I'm, I'm honored, grateful for this opportunity just to talk about uh, one of the best clubs in the entire world. So Dason, we got a, uh, a bio of him up there for our YouTube audience. Evanston native, though I know you didn't grow up in Chicago, but you, you still... You can still say you're originally from yep. Chicago. It's close yeah. enough. Yeah. Um, you know, six seasons with the Fire, Open Cup champion. Yep. That's a that's something I know Fire fans love to hear, and obviously something that's also big for Frank Klopas, given that he has won it a couple times back sure. in the day himself. And you also have the distinguished honor of being a <laughs> member of the L.A. Galactico team from 2011. <laughs> that is David Beckham. That is yeah. Landon Donovan. That is Robbie Keane. Uh, before we get into the fire stuff, I just, yeah. do you ever just pinch yourself and be like, oh, yeah, I, I know those guys? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, still to this day, you know, you talk, talk to kids that I coach or even parents. It's like, oh, you played with David Beckham or Landon Donovan, Robbie Keane, and it's like, you know, the eyes light up and things like that. And that's how I was mm -hmm. in the environment. Uh, it was just a blessing, and uh, it was once a real moment I had where we were warming up and we had to do some ball work, and they're like, partner up, partner up. I'm like, All right, and I look around, and it's like me and, and – David, you know, Beckham. <laughs> and so we're like, all right, we're juggling. And I'm like, I never juggle, concentrated and focus so much to keep the ball up and, you know, do all the right touches and things like that. But it was just like a surreal moment. I'm like, this kid from Evanston, from Cleveland, you know, is uh, juggling with one of like the top five most recognizable people in the world. So just a <laughs> surreal moment. And uh, yeah, just, just you know, got to thank God for that moment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, of course, you know, most associated with being a part of the fire and also radio color commentator yeah. on WLS. Looking forward to hearing you and former uh, podcast guest Max Toma back on the mics this season. Back at it. Looking forward to all of that. But we've got to start as we recap everything in the last two weeks since the last episode. Got to start going back to the kits and that event. As a former player, I mean, on that night, we heard from Demarcus Beasley. A bunch of other guys were there as well, including Brian McBride. As a guy who got to wear this shirt for six seasons, what does it mean to you to see the club return to that? And what did it mean to you, you to be asked to reintroduce Red to the Chicago Fire? Yeah, I mean, once again, honored, you know, grateful for the opportunity to continue to be a part of the Chicago Fire in some capacity. And the return to Red, I mean, seriously, like I, I played for the Fire PDL team th throughout my college year. So I've been rocking a Red jersey 
fire jersey for years. And so uh, just to be a part of the, the reemergence, the reintroduction of the red kit uh, was, was a great honor. But it, in terms of what it means, I mean, ultimately, it's, it's the fire. It, it is. You know, it's one of the main and big identifiers. You know, men in red, you know, <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, well, we're the men in red, but where is the red at? You know, where's the jersey? Where's the red uniform? So I'm, I'm so glad that it's back. I'm glad that they made the decision to really – come back and you know for me red is my favorite color in general <laughs> uh so it was just really great to be a part of that uh reemergence reintroduction of the red kit and it's been great to hear the local guys talk about it even you know andrew gutman who just returned to the club he like you grew up wearing red as a guy who came up through the youth ranks of yeah. the team you've got guys like brian gutierrez and chris brady who obviously likewise you know have that association with the team so yeah. it seems like it's just Beyond the other exciting news that we'll get to in a moment, yeah. it's an easy thing to just get fans excited. The players seem to be, re, you know, rejuvenated by it. The non-Chicago guys seem to get it and yeah. why this is important. So that's all been really cool. So that was a great event last week. Um, speaking of events, there was another big event just yesterday. The, mm -hmm. the main attraction was a luncheon for the plays program, the Youth Community Outreach Program, the fire runs, and an opportunity to speak to and thank everybody who is involved with supporting that. But beforehand, a small matter of a press conference with <laughs> Hugo Kuypers and Kellen Acosta being introduced officially as new fire players. Two weeks ago, when I was joined by Tim Hotze and Joe Chats on this show, we were saying that the Hugo Kuypers deal was almost done. Tom Bogert of The Athletic had reported it. The fire then, of course... Leaked the announcement the next morning. That's how timing in this business goes. Cal Acosta had been rumored around. He alluded to the struggles. He called it, and the, he then walked it back when I followed up because the, the phrasing was interesting. He called it a difficult process, and we'll never, we'll probably never know the full story of why it took so long to get that deal done, but yeah. the deal is done. Acosta seems really, really excited about the opportunity, and Hugo Kuypers is the white whale striker this club has been chasing for years. Yeah, uh, two great acquisitions. Um, obviously, Kellen Acosta, I'll start there. U.S. men's national team player, uh, just veteran in this league. So many caps, so many great experiences. Obviously, won MLS Cup with LAFC. Uh, he can certainly nail a free kick. I mean, he is he is one of the things that the fire needed from a standpoint of you to win in this league. You need uh, top-notch players who are honest, who, who play both sides of the ball, mm -hmm. who have quality. Um, and, you know, if we're talking about the, the past a little bit with the fire. We've had a lot of success with U.S. national team players playing for this organization. So I'm glad that Kellen Acosta is a part of this organization. Kuypers, listen, last year, hey, scored a ton of goals. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so for me, I'm hoping that that trend, the, the, the flow, the sharpness of that uh, flows right into this season. Last year, I mean, he banged a lot of goals. So. Yeah, 20 <laughs> goals, five assists. He, I believe, if I get this right, 34 and 51. Yeah. I, I mean, want to say over the last couple of years, forget. Dude, his see. goal numbers weren't as high this year, but the underlings are still good, which would suggest that maybe he was running a little hot last year and now is running a little cold. But, again, the fire, I mean, club record transfer fee, initial $12 million, could rise to 14. Uh, Joe Mansueto's name was invoked a lot yesterday, and with good reason, because that's – that money's got to come from somewhere. somewhere, somewhere, um, so, somewhere. Yeah, and that's really an MLS with the salary cap constraints. One of the places you can leverage having a lot of money and ownership is transfer fees because sure. those sorts of things are kind of outside the bounds of when you're spending them on a designated player. Um, we flashed the graphic a minute ago, but... You know, no, that was in, that's in preview mode. That's yeah, just, That's just for you and me. I'm just waiting for you to... Uh, I was going to say, <laughs> in addition to those two, we have some... Uh, there you go. Outgoings. I always mix up which one's preview and which one's program, but that's on me. Preview's a small one up top. <laughs> Program's the big one. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, so in addition to Kuypers and Kellen Acosta in, Jairo Torres, mutual contract termination. He is yeah. signing for FC Juarez hmm. in Liga MX. And Casper Shabilko has been bought out of the last year of his contract, an extension that was given at some unknown time over the last couple of years that bewildered fans. Uh, he is now signed for sister club Lugano, closer to his native Poland. I'm sure that's not an easy move when you're married with kids. Yeah. But, again, it was not a great situation. The Jairo Torres one, though, the fact that the fire got out of one of the worst designated player contracts in league history, yeah. and in the end, it, I mean, it cost them the salary they had to pay him to that point. But 
in the end, I mean, Jairo Torres was probably foregoing something in the region of $3 million yeah. walking away from the remaining two years of that deal. So the the place to fire at now, I think, you know, there was a lot of worries a couple weeks ago. How is this roster going to get thinned down? And suddenly, a few days from opening day, it's like, oh, somehow, George, Georg Heiss, excuse me, yeah. found a way out of this. Yeah, yeah, he figured it out. And, I mean, ultimately, we I think we were waiting for a while to figure out exactly what was going to happen with this team, whether it's from the head coaching, uh, the head coaching scenario mm -hmm. uh, and the assistants. And then uh, we talk about, well, what does the, what does the team need from a player standpoint? We know we needed a number nine. Uh, we know we needed some depth in certain areas and we needed actually just a, an identity, you know? So we got the red back. That's a good start. Uh, but ultimately it's like, well, we were close. I mean, even with everything that happened last year, uh, with Ezra being let go, um, you know, obviously, you know, Gucci having a, a, a breakout year and then kind of like tapering off a little mm -hmm. bit, Brady doing his thing all year. I mean, there were so many different uh, ebbs and flows of last year, and we still had a chance to make the playoffs, which is amazing. Uh, and so now can we take all of that, you know, kind of craziness last year, settle in, bring in, put, bring in and put in the right pieces, and then make it happen this year, not just to get into the playoffs, but can we really uh, go for the supporter shield and can we really – uh, go after the MLS Cup because I think that's what we want. That's what the fans want, mm -hmm. uh, and obviously the organi organization as well. Yeah, and everyone said it, and that it's worth <laughs> repeating that the Eastern Conference though this year is just brutal. I set up again. Tim Hotze, who was on the show two weeks ago, had a tweet yesterday, and I don't think he's wrong that the Fire could be the twelfth best team in a league where eighteen teams make the playoffs and not get in because the East, if you, you look at the top six or seven teams in the Eastern Conference, oh. it is stacked. Yeah. And then you look out West, it's like, if you put the fire in the Western Conference, they're probably getting projected fifth, sixth, seventh, somewhere in that range. It's a good and spot. In the East, it's eighth, <laughs> ninth, tenth. All right, who do we talk to about changing it real fast? Let's get us in the West. I mean, they put Nashville from the West to the East this year, and the Blackhawks and the Bulls That's have a precedent for, doesn't need to make <laughs> geographic sense which conference you put Chicago in. We can go either side. Midwest, I don't know. Midwest is best. Thought, St. Louis is in the West. I mean, what's up with that? <laughs> Well, I mean, technically, they're west of the Mississippi River. I mean, oh, just I barely, yes. Geographic. You can see the river from their stadium, but yes. <laughs> yes, that you is can technically smell true. smell the river from uh, their that, that's, that's also true. Um, hello to our friends in St. Louis, if you're watching. <laughs> uh, do have to say the Fire are currently one senior player over the limit. You're allowed... I'm not going to get into all the details, but you're allowed 20 guys designated as the primary roster, and then you have a secondary roster that can hold, like, 10 more guys. The Fire's secondary roster is not full. The primary roster is one player over. There are likely two ways they get out of that, and either one of these could happen by opening day. Uh, option one is that Arno Suke is traded in league. He now has a green card, did not participate in a moment of preseason, but was at the event yesterday, so that is up in the air. The Fire, as far as we understand it, are actively seeking an in-league trade partner now that mm. he has that green card. If that does not happen, they can buy down a primary roster contract into being secondary. The cheapest current contract on the primary roster is Spencer Ritchie, and so the Fire can use general allocation money to buy him down, which is what they will do yeah. if they cannot move Suke by midnight Friday night. So... For any Fire fans who are worried, they're going to be fine. They're going to be compliant against sure. Philly. You're not going to have to see one of the guys who thinks he's on the team get cut. <laughs> um, I was I saw this morning that uh, Aragoni's name was mysteriously not on the roster and was mm. assured that was just an, a league clerical error. He's Messed good. Up, yeah. So the team you think is going to be there is going to be there. There's just the question <laughs> of who exactly, what what the moves are going to have to be to, to get them there. But the Fire, as we said, somehow have gotten out of what looked to be a bit of a roster mess. And in our next segment here, Dayson and I are going to talk about what we want to see. What's our ideal 11? How do we want the fire to play this season? But in addition to Coors Light, there are a couple other sponsors of this show that I have to tell you about. And the first is Circa Sportsbook, a big partner of ours here at CHGO. Circa Sportsbook pride themselves on their tight money line split and low hold model. So games will strive to be minus 10 plus 110 as much as possible rather than going to minus 15 or minus 120. And Circa keeps as little money as possible on the large market future bets compared to the competition. They are very transparent and they want you to have high limits. 
No special treatment for people who bet more. Every single customer at Circa Sportsbook is treated equally. But Circa does encourage bettors to download and explore all sports betting apps available and compare the lines, and they are confident you will want to bet with Circa. There are real people behind their customer service, and they resolve their issues in a timely fashion. No chat bots that you're going to have to wait and have to deal with. And all aspects of the Circa Sportsbook app are being run by the same team running the real Circa Sportsbook out in Las Vegas. It's beautiful. And anybody who was with our Super Bowl crew yep. going out there can attest. Circa <laughs> was like the epicenter of everything uh, of media. It's just sad. The it week. sad stadium swim wasn't open because, you know, it, it was, was like 50 degrees outside. It was raining, but yeah, hard it was cold out there. <laughs> Seen people out in like winter coats and hats. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, it, Vegas. And meanwhile, today in Chicago, it is uh, above 60 degrees. It's going to be 70 here next Tuesday. Come on. Summertime shy. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah. Early. Soccer season. Let's go. (laughs) So download the Circus Sportsbook app at circusportscom slash Illinois-app to sign up today. Also be on the lookout for Circa events, watch parties, and tailgates. If you or somebody you know have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-GAMBLER. That's 1-800-426-2537. Text GAMB, G-A-M-B, to 833-234 or visit areyoureallywinning.com. Dot com. CHGO Fire is also brought to you by CD1 Price Cleaners. With their low prices, you can save on over 30% off your current dry cleaning bill if you switch to CD1 Price Cleaners. Much like Circa, they pride themselves on their transparency. Everything, like it's in the name, is one price. So you don't have to be worried about if a suit's going to cost you some magical huge amount of money that you're not prepared for. They also pride themselves on a fast turnaround. You can get your order ready same day or next day. No two to four day waits like you might be used to. You can also set up text alerts to know exactly when your dry cleaning order is ready. They don't just do dry cleaning though at CD One Price Cleaners. They can also do wash and fold laundry. They'll take your blankets, your comforters, the stuff that's too big to fit in your machine at Perhaps home. Perhaps your new red fire kits. Hey. Yeah, yeah, they will take very good care of that. Sports jerseys are one of the things. I told this story two weeks ago. I got barbecue sauce on an authentic Hawks jersey once. <laughs> College me panicked. Cleaners got it out. They can do some magical things. Leather cleaning, area rug cleaning, tailoring, alterations. This jersey is actually a little roomy on me. Not that I'm going to... Mess with it in its current form. It is great just the way it is. But you can visit chgo.cd1. That's chgo.cdone.com. The link is in the show description. And once there, you can pick from an in-store coupon or online pickup and delivery coupon options. So thank you again to Circa and CD1 Price Cleaners for sponsoring CHGO Fire. Dayson, let's talk about the team. Let's do it. I had you put together an 11 yesterday. Mm-hmm. I put together an 11. I guess I'll run through mine real quick and we sure. can chat and then we'll flip it over to you. For those watching on YouTube, there's a nice little graphic up Check on the screen. That out. Mm. For those just listening on the podcast audience, I'm going with a 4 2 3 1 formation. Uh, Chris Brady is in goal. Aragoni, Salquist, Shehos, and Gutman across the back line. Cal Nacosta and Fede Navarro. In the midfield pivot, I've got Marin Haile Selassie on the right, Shakiri playing as the number 10, and Brian Gutierrez on the left. Behind, of course, the new number nine up front, Ugo Kuypers. And I guess, Desan, what I'm thinking here, when I think about what suits this team best, I'm the same as a lot of Fire fans. I would love Brian Gutierrez to be playing in the middle in his natural position. Mm-hmm. But it seems to me that the best way to get him in that space with Shaq also on the field is just let's have Andrew Gutman bombing up and down that left sideline, yeah. overlapping. If you're familiar with Gutman's career in MLS, you know he likes to get forward in, into the attack. So mm-hmm. that's kind of what I'm seeing. I want to create a situation where you've got Gutman, Guti, Kuypers, Shakiri, Marin Holly Selassie, or I could be talking to Chris Mueller at that wide right spot. Yeah. I want to get those five dudes forward, and then in the lineup I'm going with, I've got Acosta and Navarro kind of providing a bit of a defensive shield if you turn the ball over. Yeah, I mean, that's a great lineup. Uh, can't necessarily go wrong with the, the setup that you have or the player personnel that are on the field. Uh, Gucci and Shaq need to touch the ball every possession. Yeah, right? just, get them, just get those men the ball. They need to touch the ball. When they actually are flowing and working together, really good things happen. If you probably didn't, Some people may have watched every game or a lot of games, but a lot, if you saw when they combined, you know, one-twos or just played off of each other in some capacity, goal-scoring chances were created. Uh, so I'm hoping to see a lot more of that. Uh, it will be interesting to see how how much Koopman gets up. Uh, last year, um, Miguel got up the the left hand side. 
And um, sometimes didn't get back, which was a bit of the problem. Yeah, true, <laughs> true. But he would put a good cross in, mm-hmm. um, and I was I was excited to see him when he got forward. So hopefully that can be replicated, if not even made better, uh, by Gutman. And then you know Kuipers, can you get on the end of these shots? Uh, Kellen Acosta. Uh, we'll talk about you know my eleven. Yeah, well, well, but exactly how we see him being used. Yeah. I'm leading more of a him being more of a six. A uh, bit of a spoiler, Dayson's going to lean into him being more of an eight. But again, this yeah. is kind of the, if you know Kyle Acosta, this is kind of the debate of what is he. Yeah. But no, yeah, so it's you can vary it a bit. Um, we did see in one of the two matches fans were able to watch from preseason, uh, the opening goal of the first one that was televised against LAFC mm-hmm. was Gutman overlapping down the left, and he crossed in the middle for Fabian Herbers, of all people, to just thunder a header into the back of the net. It's like... Yeah, if we can get a lot of goals that look like that this year with Gutman yeah. just serving balls up on a platter for guys in the box, I think I think everybody would be pretty darn happy with that. For sure. I mean, getting on the end of crosses is, 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 a, is a you know a, a wide player's dream, as a forward's dream, and so if the, they can continue to attack in the flanks. I mean, like I said, we had a lot of success last year, so we pretty much have the same personnel, and if we can have that same success and get somebody on the end of the cross. Yeah, somebody who I can think, score the goals. I think we'll, we'll be in good shape. And then uh, I didn't, you know, mentioned Mueller, but his return, I think, is big because he is another attacking threat, Mm -hmm. uh, depending on uh, which way he decides to attack. uh, You know, is he going to cut inside a lot or is he going to stay out wide and things like that? Um, I think, you know, ultimately the coaching staff is going to have to talk to him about how what what's more more favorable favorable for him Mm -hmm. in terms of how he should be attacking the defender. But ultimately, we got a squad and we were on the cusp last year. Do I do think that we can definitely make the playoffs. Yeah, let's take a look at Dayson. Well, real quick, Dayson's though, Miguel's group. asking you a question. Oh, yeah, we got a chat. question from Miguel. Let's who go. would be the first sub with chasing a goal and or defending a lead? Oh. I think you got to look whoever you start with, Heli Selassie or Mueller, the guy who doesn't start, who doesn't start is coming yeah. there. And then strikers, uh, Jorgos Kutsias and Tom Barlow are going to be battling for that backup job. Yep. So we'll, I guess we're going to find out who the first choice is. I think Barlow is much more of a maybe defend a lead striker because he's a very willing presser out of possession where maybe Kutius is going to be out there if you're if you're possessing the ball a bit more. Yeah, yeah. Defending, though, I think it's whoever's left out in the midfield, and that's a good segue into Dayson's team because <laughs> it looks like there's going to be only one place for Fede Navarro yeah. or Gaston Jimenez. We have both gone with Fede. Yeah. You've got him as more of a single pivot, but I think just when you think about his... Pressing and how yeah. aggressive he is. Yes, he's a little uh, susceptible to the odd yellow card, but I want him to have the freedom to do that. And with Kellen out there as well, a guy who, to yeah. your point earlier, will adjust as the game is going and has a bit more of a defensive work rate than someone like Gaston Jimenez, that might make Fede more comfortable to just be the player he is. Yeah, I think it's uh, with him being the, the six and the, maybe kind of the workhorse there, mm-hmm. uh, doing a lot more of the dirty work. Um, I think Kellen could, could join the attack more, which, you know, get that five attacking. Man, it would be really, really good. Um, and I think that it's, it's, let's hypothetically say that, you know, Freddie just, you know, kind of wiles out one day. Or <laughs> it's just not – It's going to happen. He's got a yellow card and he needs to come off the pitch. Well, Kellen can drop in, hold that position. You bring Gazdon Jimenez – or you bring in Herbers because Herbers can play anywhere. The most selfless yeah. man maybe in Major League he, Soccer. He can, Fabi will do anything. He can play anywhere. So I don't think that uh, it, it's a it's a big deal to have him be the lone six there, to be the lone like I said, workhorse, to, to break up passes and getting in passing lanes and, you know, just do what he does best. So, I, like I said, I, I think our roster, our, our the starting lineup that, you know, you put out, I put out, I think it's more than formidable to do some damage in this league and be a a, uh, a contender for a playoff spot for sure. Yeah, and so for those not watching on YouTube, the only changes we had between my lineup and Dayson's lineup was that Dayson's got more of a 4-3-3 shape with Guti tucking inside. Again, the age-old debate, is Guti a winger? Yeah. Is he an eight in the world where tens don't really exist anymore, yeah. in particular for the U.S. men's national team? That's not a position that really exists, so... Mm-hmm. He's got to just kind of figure out which one of those two things he's going to be. Uh, Dayson's gone for Mueller over Marin Holly Selassie, and in theory, Shaq playing off the right, which, again, I, I think I like your lineup as well. As I said before, I don't really care what it looks like on paper. Just give me that band of five in the attack with Acosta and whoever in midfield. Just have an attacking strategy that looks coherent yeah. rather than just... 
here's a bunch of dudes trying to make something happen. Well, yeah, I mean, and, and I think ultimately, when we talk about, if I'm answering the question about who will be the first sub, yeah, Myron Holly Salasa, I think because he's so dynamic, uh, his ability to change the game. And I hope that he, um, he takes the mentality of, like, you know, for lack of a better terminology, the killer instinct, mm-hmm. uh, and really just go in attack mode because he's so dynamic on the ball, so quick. Uh, I think that in terms of, uh, like I said, trying to chase a goal, Kutsias, like I said, he has a lot of energy. Uh, he has a lot of ability to try to get behind uh, get behind defenses, and, and he runs hard, man. And mm-hmm. he's technical. He's quality. He can put the ball in the back of the net. If we're defending the league, uh, bring Herbers in. Bring Herbers in. Uh, to play more attacking, you know, instead of bringing him in for defensive you know, midfielder, bring him in for a winger or Shakiri. And or I know whoever. this might sound kind of crazy, uh, but I would say bring on Gaston Jimenez because, for me, for me, he is so good on the ball. Right. Keeping and, the ball is his and thing. keeping the ball. So if we are in a situation where we're, you know, we're defending, or excuse me, we're trying to protect the league, well, you can't always just clear it, clear it, clear it. you got to settle down. It's good to have Kellen Acosta to be able to do that, right, mm-hmm. uh, a veteran. But then also somebody who can hold on to the ball and make quality decisions uh, with the ball to keep possession and try to kill off a game. Absolutely. So, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. But I think what it comes down to, you know, Christian in the comments says we need more goals this year, and that's absolutely a fact for the Flyer. They just they got to score more, they've yeah. got to convert more, they've got to create more, and I think regardless of especially keeping in mind how difficult the road is going to be this season, and the Flyer have a difficult schedule overall, including their Western Conference opponents include both Seattle and LAFC, which is just a unfortunate bad luck of the draw. You know, I forget who it is, but there's one team that plays just a joke of an easy Western Conference schedule, and it's. Mm. I think it's NYCFC plays okay. like the team, like the like the the six Western Conference teams they play mm-hmm. are the bottom six bottom from last six. Se- season. It's like, oh well, that isn't that nice for them. But I think really, Fire fans they want to be entertained. They know what the context is of all this. Make going out going out to Soldier Field and watching this team yeah. play a good time. And yeah. if that's the floor you can set, you'll you'll think the wins will come. If they're playing soccer that makes people want to come out week in and week out. That's going to be soccer. That's going to get you points. Yeah, for me, you know, it's it's really, I know this might sound crazy, but it's really, it was just, I feel like the Fire weren't as much of a team last year. Mm-hmm. Right? I know it's kind of simple, kind of elementary, like, oh, do you like each other? Do you, you know, will you work hard for the next person? And for me, I just saw a little bit too much of um, contention, maybe that's the right word, or, or, there wasn't enough cohesiveness yeah. between players. And I'm not even necessarily talking about this pass, that pass. I'm literally talking about, hey, let's are we in this together? Yeah, let's go hang out. Let's, you know, what are you are, how, what's the mood in the locker room? And they've got a couple guys. Acosta's a glue guy. You can see that already with the way he's the this, this time he's spending around the guys, the way I saw him yesterday talking to a lot of the young players, getting to know them. Hootman's a glue guy. He's a guy who's really passionate about being a local. I mean, he's told us at media availabilities that he was still watching all the fire games when he was playing for these other teams, which, man, credit to him, because that sounds like stress a well, professional athlete did not need in his life. Well, think about it. I mean, your home, whatever your hometown is, mm-hmm. whatever your hometown is, people, uh, you know, you you support them almost through and through. You know, you can't help where you grew up from the standpoint of, uh, you know, I grew up in Chicago, I grew up in Detroit. Like, I'm going to support the team, you know, for the most part, uh, good, bad, happy, or sad. So mm-hmm. him watching the fire from a distance, even playing against them, Man, one day I will hope to, to get back there and play against them, uh, and, and you know. But ultimately, having a player once having a player like Gutman and then having Kellen Acosta, uh, there's something about listen, there's something about an American player who is just just a hardworking, you know, dedicated, honest player. Sometimes when you have so many different players from different uh, areas or places around the world, you don't necessarily have that touch point with the city. Or that touch point with the the, the region, mm-hmm. you know. So uh, we have how many homegrown players now? Yeah, we got about three, four, five, maybe on the on Jeez, the squad. Epic high. It's 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 a decent number. I mean, it's been solid for the last few seasons. But you talking about the rib? You talking about mm-hmm. like what it really means? I mean, that you you get an extra fight, an extra yeah. bite uh, from players uh, f- to be able to try to get over the hump to to win games. So I appreciate the, the, bringing in a player like Gutman. You got Guti. You got. Uh, Pineda, you got Brady. I mean, these are these are players. Then you add on top of that, uh, you know, the Shacks, you know, and the Kuipers. Um, and then, you know, we got she hosts solid as a rock back there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can go on and on, but I just think there's something about 
there's something about having uh, players who are from the area or who are sorry, a little biased American players who are mm-hmm. like, you know, this is this is this is this matters to me, right? Uh, a tremendous amount. Absolutely. Now, yeah, again, I think you're already seeing some of that vibes. <laughs> Hopefully, it will transfer out on the field, and that's what we're going to talk about next to wrap things up today. The Fire, the Philadelphia Union, our friend JP from PHLY Union going to be joining us right after a word from Ray Auto. Are you in the market for a new vehicle? If you are, then we have some great news for you. Our partner, Ray Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Fox Lake, is having an ongoing President's Day sale event all month Long And you know what that means. You'll be able to shop presidential savings on their wide selection of inventory. For a limited time, get 20% off MSRP on all remaining new 2023 Jeep Gladiator models with the dealer discount. They're number one for new vehicle quality among mid-sized trucks, says J.D. Power. And that's not all. Shop Ray's last call on select Dodge Challenger and Charger models. Dodge is the most powerful muscle car brand, so you don't want to miss out on their last call with over 20 Dodge muscle cars to choose from. At Ray CDJR, you'll always be able to shop one of Chicagoland's largest inventories and drive home with more money in your pocket than you'd expect thanks to Ray's price promise. Don't miss out. Shop great deals all month long and save big because Ray CDJR makes buying a new vehicle more affordable than ever. That's not all, though. Just for listening, you can get a free oil change when you mention CHGO at the service center or mention CHGO when you book online at RayCDJR slash service. But you have to schedule before February 15th when the month runs out. So if you're in the market for a new vehicle, then you have to check out the team at Ray Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram because they are the only team we recommend. Visit them today on Route 12 in Fox Lake. For more information, visit Ray CDJR in Fox Lake or RayCDJR.com. Serving the community since 1963. MLS is back. The season starts tonight. Enter Miami, host Real Salt Lake. But we only kind of care about that game as fans of this <laughs> league. We're way more interested in... In Saturday night, it yep. is the fire traveling out to the East Coast to take on the Philadelphia Union. And we are thrilled to be joined by our guy, JP, from PHLY. A little all-city connectivity here. JP, how you doing, sir? Thanks so much for hopping on the podcast. No, thank you. What's going on, Alex and Dason? Appreciate okay. you guys inviting me here. I'm excited. We got fire. We got union. I'm going to give you guys a fair warning. I'm running on four cups of coffee after last night's CCC. I'm going to <laughs> take, take me a minute to get used to that as well, but I appreciate the invite, guys. Yeah, I can't say we blame you. For those who aren't familiar, Philly played down in Costa Rica last night in the CONCACAF Champions Cup uh, in a game that included both one of the most ridiculous own goals you'll ever see when Jakob Glesnes decided it was a good idea to shoot at his own net. And then Julian Carranza got a hat trick for Philly to get a 3-2 yeah. win good that they are trick. taking back for the home leg. So not many American teams win games in Costa Rica. So a credit to the Union for despite, again, one of the silliest goals you're ever going to see <laughs> um, getting out of there anyway. So, JP, we're having you on because, we, you know, we're previewing this game and for our viewers who maybe aren't super familiar with the union, we want to kind of get them up to speed a bit. Um, not a lot of change for this team, really. This offseason, the season before that, I mean, the big news toward the end of last year, head coach Jim Curtin, fire alum, still there. General manager Ernst Tanner, he stays as well. How would you describe the vibe right now around this union team, given that they were good the last couple of years and that same group of players is basically what they're running with? Yeah, so it depends on who you ask. If you ask within the club, I think that you would you would hear that the vibes are pretty high. I think that this team's got a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. If you hear the outside noise from the fan base and just the media in general, there's kind of like question marks. No one really knows what to think of the union because, like you mentioned, I mean, this is a team that went MLS Cup two, two years ago, one of the craziest finishes ever in MLS Cup history. Last year was a little... It's a little bit fatiguing, I'll be honest with you. And, of course, it ended in controversy. And so you head into this year. I think for some fans, they expected, okay, we're almost there. So we're going to get that big signing. And the offseason comes and goes, and we didn't get that big signing. We still kind of got some time here with, with the April deadline. But I think for most fans, expect to run it back part two here. Um, it's not as exciting for a lot of people. But I think you guys saw last night that, Obviously, there's some changes throughout the league, including your fire. Kudos to you guys. You guys made some big signings as well. But I think that the resiliency and the toughness of this team 
is really what's going to push them forward. And I think that it's what's going to keep them in the mix with some of the top teams in the East. And it's really a credit to, I mean, Jim Curtin, again, fire alum. That guy's done, yeah. a, done a lot of good work there. Yeah. He's a the guy the fire fans wanted to bring in last season oh, before, he's, before he <laughs> signed that extension. So, I mean, you, you know what you're going to get with the Jim Curtin team. Yeah, you definitely do. You know you're going to get uh, a hardworking, organized group who they're going to give you everything they have, you know, and they find a way every year. Every year they always find a way to find themselves in position to do some damage in the Eastern Conference. Um, you know, I'm happy for Jim. Obviously, he's a former teammate of mine. Yeah. Uh, you know, he showed me a lot to play with. His, his younger brother was on the team, Jim, mm-hmm. as well. So, you know, obviously the fire connection. Uh, but, you know, Philly has, uh, you know, throughout their time, you know, I remember we played uh, Philly at, at Toyota Park, and they it was when the Blackhawks were playing, the Flyers in the playoffs, and they came <laughs> off, they came up, they came out of their warm-up jackets at the National Anthem with Philadelphia Flyers uh uh, shirts on. So anyway, this, this connections are, are, are great. But like I said, the, Jim Curtin is going to put out a great, uh, a great, great side. He incorporates the young, the younger players quite mm-hmm. a bit. They always end up, you know, finding one or two where they end up selling. And I know you guys had the, in the off season, the, the, you know, the questions about Kai Wagner, um, was he coming back or not? And, you know, Karan's just, you know, he, he does his thing in terms of putting the ball in the back of the net. So I know you guys are going to have a good year. Uh, hopefully not a better year than a fire. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but we you know we still we, we still believe in, in in you guys for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jason hit on the point there, JP. You guys are known as a team. The, the union are a youth pipeline. Recently, <clears throat> obviously, you've got Brendan Aronson is kind of like the poster child. Paxton as well going over. Kind of a two parter for you here. One, much like everybody in Chicago is hoping this is the year Brian Gutierrez really takes a step forward. In your mind, is this the year that Jack McGlynn? similarly has to take a step forward. And then my fa- my part two on that is uh, how much buzz is there already for 14 year old Kevin Sullivan, who is supposed oh, to be man. just like the greatest thing we've ever seen. He's a player. Uh, it, the, the hype is real. The question right now in for union land, it would be whether or not we will see them by the time he hits that 18 birthday, because European teams are calling. Obviously, you hear the links to Manchester City, Borussia Dortmund, Bayern Munich. So, I mean, those are some pretty damn good clubs, guys. So, it's really tough to tell, but we all would hope to at least see him at least be on the bench on the senior team at least, right? So, as far as Jack McGlynn and the youth movement here, it's interesting because going into the season, there was a little bit of a question mark because... Look, obviously we're selling players. We we sold Pax and Aronson as far as some of the youth goes, but ever since like Brandon Aronson and Mark McKenzie, we really haven't had that big impact on the pitch. Mark and Brandon were every match starters, and ever since then, yes, Jack, uh, Quinn, Nate have been in and out the lineup. So. We wanted to see this year if they would be a big impact because that's part of the plan that we were promised here. That we would develop these kids through the youth system and then they would be a part of the senior team. But this year, I have some high hopes. You've seen some big strides. You mentioned Nate Harriel. I'm sorry, you mentioned Jack McGlynn. Obviously, for him, the big step is defensively, which I thought I saw huge improvements just in one match last night. Nathan Harriel, who I mentioned as well, who really kind of took that right back position and just his versatility, Jim, you know, Dason uh, mentioned it. Jim has really trusted in Nate Harriel to play all throughout the back line. And Dason, you know, that's that's tough to do. This man's playing center back. This man's playing left back as a righty. That's crazy to see. Yeah. But the big one, gentlemen, is Quinn Sullivan. Mm-hmm. Quinn Sullivan last night had a huge match. Mm-hmm. Playing as that right shuttle midfielder, we really haven't been able to find that set position. But... I think he's married himself to this right shuttle back position. Okay. And if he's found himself a position that's really dangerous here. And I think that we're going to finally get that huge impact matching and match out from at least three of these players here, because they're, they're taking the right steps here in year number three, well, year number four, technically for some of these guys. Yeah. And that'd be big. Cause obviously the guy who's occupied the right side of the four, four, two diamond is Ali Bedoya. He is getting up there in age. He's back, but again, it's, how many more miles are in that tank. So again, if Quinn Sullivan can kind of be the heir there, that would be a cool setup. Uh, yeah. JP, before we get you out of here, we want to give you the chance to turn it around on us and maybe Dayson <laughs> specifically. As you look at the fire coming into town on Saturday, yeah. what, what's what's the big question for you? What, what do you want some perspective on in terms of what the union might see this weekend? 
Well, I think for I think the whole league wants to know like how you guys are going to integrate some of these attacking pieces. I mean, it's an impressive offseason that you guys have had. Uh, you guys have some depth now. I just kind of want to see how this will all look. Well, you guys, because I think in the past you guys have run mostly like a four two three one. Obviously, a lot of possession dominated. So I'm just curious. Like, it's it's going to be it's definitely fun. It's a good problem to have. But how are some of these attacking pieces going to fit in? I think we kind of have the same question. Yeah. We were talking about that today. Like, that's kind of part of the question because, I mean, you know, JP said it. It's, you know, four, two, three, one, and vibes has kind of been the thing. And so I think JP and Dayson can follow up on this, but I think everybody in Chicago has the same question. What is this team going to look like? Yeah. How is it going to look different from what they've become very accustomed to in recent years? Yeah, I, I agree. I, we, we haven't really had an identity for the last, I don't know, number of years. And obviously we haven't made the playoffs in quite some time. But for me, I just need, I want Shaq and I want Gucci to be free to just roam. Shaq seems to have success on the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. uh, he seems to play that way when he's with the Swiss national team. And when he's on that right-hand side with the national team, he seems to ball out. So I'm hoping that, you know, he can find himself in that position as well. Once again, we, we spoke earlier and I mentioned that when actually Gucci and Shaq combine – you know, quite a bit and play off of each other. Good things happen. And now we just need somebody on the end of the, on the end of the ball who can make that last play, who can, who can put the ball in the back of the net off of a cross or, you know, we, we created chances. We did. We created chances quite a bit, whether it's from Holly Selassie, um, like I said, Guti, uh, and like I said, Miguel Navarro putting crosses in, but now we just need somebody to just make sure that that ball ends up in the back of the net of the opposing team, I'm hoping, you know, we'll do that a little bit this weekend, you know, <laughs> just a little bit. Um, but ultimately, you know, to answer your question, I, you know, obviously we're all asking the same question, trying to figure it out. But for me, I just need those two, Gucci and Shaq, to really just play off each other, uh, yeah. form that bond, and then actually um, just play within themselves and, and flow, man. Just enjoy the game and have fun. I think that they'll have success then. Real quick, that was a really good point you bring up because I think a lot of teams or a lot of fans are wondering how do how do our teams succeed? And I think like identity is such a big part. If you look at some of the teams that are in the playoffs, they have some type of identity. At least if you give yourself that, you'll give yourself a chance to build a team around that. I mean, I think Columbus is a great example. Nancy w w literally walked into the perfect situation because the, the pieces were, were kind of there for a system. So that's a really important piece to mention as far as team building the MLS in 2024. And speaking, sorry about the, the Nancy piece. I remember just covering the game, and you know, I I knew that he wants to possess the ball. He wants to build mm -hmm. out the back, and it actually got them in trouble sometimes last year. You know, they were just they didn't care. We're going to pass the ball, the back, play out the back, and whatever they stuck to it. Yep. <laughs> and, but that hey, was it worked. Their, they, they they got a cup they're taking home. Yeah. So. You know, it worked. For if sure. it works, it works. Um, JP, one last real quick thing before we get yeah. you out of here, and thank you for your time. Uh, when I watch Union games, the player I enjoy watching most is Jose Martinez because he is just a <laughs> chaos unto himself. A wild card. <laughs> uh, do you enjoy watching him or is it stressful because you're worried he's going to get sent off every five minutes? Oof, that's a tough question because like there are moments and, and I'm, I'm Colombian just, just for for context. I'm Colombian. I understand some of the antics that he does. It, it's fine for sure. But as a union fan, no, I get nervous because he's so important to what we try to do, especially yeah. when you're talking about that compact midfield. It's so important to have that base with Brujo Martinez, who does a little bit of everything. So it, it's it's fun, yes, but you're just like, okay, okay, that that's it right there, Brujo. That's it. Let's go. Let's move on to the next no, play. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I just I love. I mean, again, as a neutral, it's just to see him buzzing around the field, especially in Concacaf games, like you know, like last night where it gets a little <laughs> spicy. It's like, man, Jose Martinez in Concacaf <laughs> is a recipe for I don't know what, but it's going to be something worth watching for better or worse yeah. when it comes to Philly. Uh, JP, we really appreciate you taking the time. Real quick before you get out of here, tell the people where they can uh, find what you're up to and keep tabs with our PHLY crew out there if they wish to do so. Absolutely. That all city love is strong, ladies and gentlemen. You can find us over at PHLY Union. Me and my co-host Renee Washington, she is freaking awesome. We got you covered every week with all things Philadelphia Union. Uh, PHLY Sports for all things uh, Philly sports. I appreciate that the, the Blackhawks and Flyers connection, not a great memory in particular, uh, but we're actually, it's funny because Blackhawks and Flyers tonight.
There you go. Yeah, hey. I saw some Flyers jerseys walking around on my way in here today, and I'm like, oh, this is this is fitting. We got a bit of a week going. Well, JP, thank you so much, and uh, we'll catch up with you later in the season if and when our teams cross paths again on an occasion of note. Good luck to your guys this season. We'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. As we say here in Philly, dupe on, ladies and gentlemen. Talk to you soon, guys. <laughs> See you. Shout out to JP. Thanks so much to him and the folks at PHLY. Yeah, Renee was unable to join us as well today, but she is just always so busy. I don't understand how she has so many things going on, and she's kind of the heartbeat of that office out there. So they're doing great work out there, and always good to see good things happening in the all-city community. So, Dason, as we wrap up here, like I asked JP, so, you know, a quick word about what you're looking forward to about the season and, you know, where people can keep up with the radio work this year and uh, yeah. that whole thing as we go into year two. Yeah, for sure. So things are, I mean, I, the word for me is hope, you know, I, there's hope because I mean, look, we got a new Jersey, you know, we got a new red kit. Uh, so there's a lot of pride that's been reestablished in the organization simply from a, a, a kit. Um, and then, you know, with the new signings, uh, the new acquisitions, there's definitely hope with this team because like I said, we were very close uh, last year. So I think hopefully these these acquisitions, um, some pieces in and out uh, can now get us over the top and finally back into the playoffs uh, since what, 2017? 2017. 2017. Yeah, it's been a minute. So Game against the New York Red Bulls, yeah. we do not talk about. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm optimistic for sure. Optimistic. Uh, hopes, hope, my hope is high and I'm, I'm ready for this season to get started. And then where you can find us, hey, you know, WLS 890 AM. Uh, myself and Max Toma and Max Anderson uh, will, will be a part of us as well. Every game uh, for the fire this this uh, season. And, hey, it's going to be a great season. I mean, please tune in. You know, check us out. Yeah, and reminder, <laughs> for those of you watching on Apple MLS Season Pass, you can yep. select the home radio feed. You don't have to do any weird syncing up with the radio. No. Apple does it for you. So if you want to yeah. listen to Dayson and Max, you can check into that. Starting this Saturday, yeah. when the Fire take on the Union, that is at 6.30 p.m. on MLS Season Pass. I believe all the games this weekend are free on Apple as, you know, kind of a promotional thing they do to convince you to sign up for the Season Pass. And then, big one, home opener, March 2nd, 7.30 p.m., Soldier Field next Saturday against FC Cincinnati. Uh, hopefully, I'll see a bunch of you out there. If you see me, say hi. If you see Dayson, introduce yourself. I'll be there. Say hi. And, you know, it's going to be a big event <laughs> FC Cincinnati, rivals, defending Supporter Shield winners, fire back in red at Soldier Field. Should be a good one. And, you know, by the time I talk to you guys again in two weeks, we'll see where the fire are. You know, two big tests here to start the season as we get a gauge for what we can hope for in this 2024 season. Podcast, as I said, will be back after the home opener. Uh, other fun news and stuff coming in the meantime, again, in big part, thanks to our partner, Coors Light. Thank you again to them for being the presenting sponsors of CHGO Fire. Shout out to Lawrence on the ones and twos today behind the scenes. Thank you. Appreciate you. Shout out to <laughs> Dayson Robinson for coming in. Yeah. Sir, thank you so much for taking the time. Always you know, glad to have you around anytime you want to come back. And looking forward to uh, hearing you on the radio this season. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And uh, this is great. I uh, love talking about soccer. love talking about the fire. So, this is definitely uh, an exciting moment for me. Absolutely. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of CHGO Fire. Thank you for listening, for watching. I'm Alex Campbell, and we will see you next time. We all silly like the mayor. 